Hi, my name is Karen Boniker, and I'm a painter master, and I'd like to introduce you to a new brush pack for Painter Essential 7 called Rake. I'm going to start off with the first brush called Gritty Pencil, and I use that to create the sketch of the horse here. It has a nice uh, gritty pencil feel to it, and I think you'll um, you know, really enjoy working with it. Let me take that off and go in here and do a little bit on his mane for you and forelock. And you can see that it does um, have some nice texture to the pencil. So it's a good one for getting in your initial sketches. And uh, it also is a great brush for picking up paper texture. And the next brush I'm going to show you is called Blunt Gritty. Um, I'm going to pick a color here and uh, again this brush will pick up paper texture. Um, it's a good brush for laying in color pretty quickly um, if you're looking for something with a lot of uh, um, texture and um, hatching effect. And if you put very firm pressure on the brush, you're going to get very heavy saturation. And then lighter pressure, you're going to get a little more texture coming through. Pick a different color here. And I'll do a large stroke so you can see the texture of the brush. And as we get into a smaller brush, you can see how it fades out. So a really good brush for covering large areas pretty quickly if you're looking to give that area some nice um, uh, texture as well. Uh, that's Blunt Gritty. The next brush is called Crosshatch and uh, this one basically uh, is a hatching type of brush. Uh, you can use it for your charcoal sketches, um, any kind of sketch that you're after. Good. Uh, way to work with it is um, dark and then to light so you can go to a lighter value here and go back over your brush strokes and um, we're kind of following the contours of the horse and you can see how you would work with it the same principle as you would working with pencils and doing cross hatching. So if I started down in this area and then I went back over it, it's going to continue to get darker and darker as I hatch over those areas. So in a large size here you can see the brush stroke and how it hatches over each stroke. and that is crosshatch. The next brush is Gritty Hatch and I'll make a nice big brush stroke so you can see the texture of this brush and you can see it's also a hatching brush so it's going to become much darker as you go over areas so it will become more saturated just as if you were working with charcoals or pencils. and it has some really lovely texture with it as well. So again you'll just go over areas to saturate and hatch over those areas and then you can use a lighter brush to go over those areas again. And it just is really a beautiful brush for creating a very uh, very sketchy pencil or even a chalk effect. One of my favorites in the group. The next brush is Gritty Shader and um, this brush is nice um, for hatching and cross hatching. It, um, let me get a little darker color here. So with firm pressure, you'll get nice heavy saturation with these nice textural edges coming out. 
very responsive to paper texture. And I will do a large brush size here so you can see the texture of this brush. And you can see it's another hatching type of brush. So it's got lots of texture in it. And uh, you can use it large for creating areas of texture or use it smaller for uh, hatching and building up value. And that's Gritty Shader. The next brush is Lacy Hatch. And I'll make a big brush stroke here so you can again see this. Again, it's a very um, delicate hatching brush. I use it um, again for building up areas of texture or you can use this brush almost completely for one illustration or drawing as well. Good for portrait work where you need a little texture and you would also work with it the same as you would uh, traditional pens or uh, pencils, chalks, where you hatch and cross hatch to build value. And that is Lacy Hatch. The next brush is the shading brush. And again, this is a very traditional hatching brush. Again, you would use it the same way you would with traditional pens, pencils, and chalk, where you're building value while adding your hatch marks. Cross and cross hatch. When I work with this one, I, I really enjoy working with this um, hatching brush. It is beautiful when you follow the contours or the direction of the hair of the, say for example, the horse or the cat or the dog that you're painting. So you would want to follow that and then build on it in terms of your lights and darks. A little trick or a little tip when working in Painter Essentials is to use your Alt key to sample color as you're working through. Because as you're doing these, a lot of times you'll develop lots of color already in your drawing and you can just sample those colors to keep the effect going. So staying with the contour of the hair of the horse, I added some whiskers down here. You can also work with a very small brush and use it for more detail work as well. And that is the shading brush. The next brush is Spot Hatch, and I will show you this brush large. And you can see that it's a texture brush. So it would just be a matter of um, when I tend to use it for sketching, I use it smaller and in maybe in just areas where I'm looking to create a little bit of interesting texture that maybe I'm not able to get with a certain pencil or stroke. 
and that is the spot hatch. The next brush is Texture Rake. This is another brush that you'll use to create texture, trees, buildings, hair. You can see that it creates a really nice and interesting texture. I'm basically working back and forth and up and down with this brush to create the hatching effect. And you can work over color, creating a real interesting, different approach. That is Texture Rake. The last brush is Weave and I'm going to show you how to use this brush. Um, this is perhaps one of my favorite brushes for creating texture and also creating that um, hair effect. It, it's good for horses, it's really good for dogs and for cats. But again, the trick is making sure that you're working with the contours of the horse or the animal that you're painting or drawing. Um, the hair always goes a certain direction, so you'll get the best effect by staying true to that. And you can see that it creates really, really nice texture. The hair on the cheek of the horse tends to follow the contours of the horse. And if you put firm pressure on this brush, you can see that you get more saturation and softer pressure a lighter value of that same color you're working on. So you can switch up your colors. And so this brush is very nice for creating that um, texture that looks more like hair. Uh, and of course you can always work with different values of the color you're working on to exaggerate that effect. But the goal here would be to keep the brush going in the direction of the hair, following the contours. And you can still work with it uh, very much like you would a pencil doing hatching and cross hatching. You can see that it gives a very nice texture effect. In large size, the brush looks something like this. So you can see that you can cross hatch very easily with it. In smaller sizes, you'll create a really, really nice texture in your drawings. And that is Weave. So I hope you enjoyed these new brushes for Painter Essential 7 called Weave. Um, if you enjoy drawing uh, from uh, portraits of pets, animals, horses, whatever it happens to be, um, I think you'll really enjoy working with these beautiful hatching brushes. Take care.